Courtney, thank you for making time for us today. It's always an honor to you come bet. to the Olive Branch Chiropractic. Thanks for coming down. Yes. Now, this space is very, very comfortable. Um, when did you design it? This obviously has your touch to it. Oh gosh, I think we designed this space in 2016. We were in another spot in the same building before that. And we came in and we knew that it needed a lot of work mm -hmm. and it had to have a great feel when you stepped through the doors that you were in a healing place because mm. before it turned into a healing place, it was kind of a man cave. It was uh, all painted gray and the electrical was on top of the walls. Mm. And, uh, you know, it felt like, you know, where things go to... <laughs> <laughs> things go to never come <laughs> back. Things go to never come back. No, I, I yeah. get it. I get it. And, and it has nice lighting and a water mm. feature where I just am feeling soothing right here in the moment. Yeah. Um, People step through the doors all the time and tell me they can't find the spot that was hurting anymore because they feel so much better inside the office. You've created an atmosphere of healing right to begin with. Yeah, that's the first part. So, Feeling like you can let go of what you came in with. I'm going to take just a second. There you go. Let it go. There you go. Like Elsa. <laughs> and we sing that in here sometimes when I break out the karaoke. You should. <laughs> I didn't know there's karaoke. It happens when I get, uh, you know, loopy <laughs> after a while. Sounds like a good time. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, awesome. Well, right off the top, let's um, share, how do we find you here? You're on Newport in the middle mm -hmm. of the action, but how does one make their way to Olive Branch? Most people find us online, typically with a Google search for a chiropractor in the okay. area. Um, some people find us on Yelp. And occasionally people find us on Facebook, but the best recommendation is always the recommendation of a friend. Okay. You know, now if, a referral. if I have a friend that tells me about this place and I'm driving down Newport, mm -hmm. which way, how do I find you there? If I'm coming from Sunset Cliffs, going towards the water, how do we make it here? I always tell people to just come down to Newport Avenue and turn towards the beach and uh, stop before you hit Bacon Street. Right, right before Bacon Street yeah. in the OB Mall. Or I say right across from the Apple Tree Market because that's a good landmark. You can't miss it. That's true. Yeah. In the OB Mall, some people know where that is. Not everybody I know. remembers when it was uh, an arcade and a pizza place and all that stuff. The OB Mall is kind of an insider term, I think. It is an insider term. But across the street from the Apple Tree, everybody can see. Yeah. So... I want to know more about chiropractic. I spent some time pondering about it. And my first question is, you may or may, you no know, expectation to nail this, but how did it get started? I'm curious about the first oh. man or woman that just cracked someone into place. How did, what's the question. evolution? The very first person who got adjusted by the very first chiropractic adjustment was deaf. Deaf. He could not hear. And his friend looked at his back and said, your spine just seems out of place right here. And he literally Amazing. put a thrust into the spine right there, adjusted his back and his hearing came back. So when chiropractic first started, people thought it was a cure for deafness. What he did was he corrected the interference to his nervous system and his hearing was restored. Okay, I wanna get back to that because that's amazing. I want to put that on the timeline though. Did that okay. was his back like mangled because it was like Stone Age and they're working with tools or got stepped on by a dinosaur. Like how long ago is that? Or was that like 60 years ago? About a little over 100 years ago. 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. And what part of the world did they attribute Although that to? Although I happen to think that forms of chiropractic have been practiced for millennia. Oh, because for sure. when you look at cave paintings, there is stuff that looks like chiropractic. They, who needs it more than. A cave person. Seriously, right? That's You're rough. sleeping on a rock. There was no... He has a rock in your back. <laughs> there's no sleep train. There's, okay. no, there's no magical fluffy mattress. That's true. People were walking around pretty crooked, I'm, I'm sure, in one way, shape, or form. Yes. And it can shorten lifespan to have a crooked spine that's creating substantial interference to the nervous system as it comes out of the spine and goes to the body mm. because it's providing all the power. It's the power source and the energy source to all the organs, all the tissue. Okay. So that's really important as the power source. Now, it back at the beginning when you one needed chiropractic because of 
chariot riding sure. or whatever happens back then. Now javelin throwing. Yes. <laughs> now now we end up like this over the course of the day. And yes. what happens to our energy when our shoulders come up and our spine bends over and like that with our teeth? It's literally reduced. It it's literally reduced. reduces the frequency of firing that's going up to your brain. Okay. So chiropractic, and I, I've heard of this, but not straight from the mm -hmm. source. Tell us about the chiropractic, you know, how the brain and the spine and the organs, how it's all tied together in the spine in relation to the brain. Okay. Well, let's go back to when you were an embryo. I don't and remember. you were forming. You can't remember. Dang. Uh, when you were forming in the womb and you're a bunch of undifferentiated cells, hmm. the very first thing that forms is the nervous system. And then the nervous system grows everything else. And from there, it conducts all of the tasks taking really? place in the body. The brain is the master control system. It's telling everything else what to do. Mm. And all of the nerves that come off the brain and travel through and out of the spine, those are like its extensions, its cords. It's going everywhere. It's directing everything. So what happens is the spine protects it. But the spine has to move because your body has to move. And so if the spine gets stuck in a certain area, it creates pressure on the nerves there. And the pressure reduces the signal from the brain to the body and from the body back up to the brain. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. I just got this little vision of maybe, correct me if I'm wrong, but your spine, no, your brain is like the conductor and your nerves, that's like the instruments and the energy, that's the music. And your music is turned down low if it just can't flow from part to part as intended. Yes. So what chiropractors look for is something in the spine called a subluxation. That's where a vertebra is out of place and stuck. And the word subluxation literally means less light. Really? Yes, because energy is perceived as light in so many situations. You look at frequencies, there's a visible light spectrum, but if you look at all frequencies, they have the potential to produce light. We only see a certain portion of it, though. Hmm. That's fascinating. Yeah, it's all based on science. It's all based on physics. Um, I didn't go to chiropractic school and beat drums and <laughs> sing kumbaya. <laughs> <laughs> So you actually went to a place with professional mentorship, working on real humans, not online? Absolutely, yes. Okay, so let's, let's pause there for a sec. What are some of the myths about chiropractic that maybe sometimes in a very Western medicine, um, you know, treat the symptom, not the problem-based world? Mm -hmm. what, what are some of the pushback you get about chiropractic from the ignorant or naysayers? Um, some of the stuff I hear is... They want you to come forever or um, you get addicted to it. And that's really based on once you make a correction in the spine <laughs> and people go back out and live their lives and something else happens and the spine goes back out of alignment, do you just leave it there because you already went to see a chiropractor mm. once? I mean, you. It's like eating. Yes. <laughs> yes. Know? It's like healthy eating. It's like going to the gym. It's, it's taking like, care of yourself. Absolutely. It's like anything else where um, if you're going through a crisis, we may need to see you more often to get you through it. But then once it's over, you know, you can maintain what you've done and you can prevent future injuries better and um, prevent health problems through receiving chiropractic care. Well, so some people choose it as a lifestyle, is what I'm trying to say. Is what, what would you recommend, and you and I have had this conversation before, what would you recommend like the, a good regular rhythm to visit, you know, chiropractic, to visit you here? Um, it depends. If somebody's really, <clears throat> really badly injured, then sometimes they need to come in three times a week. And we're talking about people who've been in bad car accidents, um, people who've maybe had a slip and fall, not a fracture, mm -hmm. but a slip and fall injury. Um... And then sometimes we have people who are a little bit neurologically unstable. And to get them stabilized, it does take a higher frequency, much like going to the gym, because we're going to create new muscle memory as we send signals up to the brain through the adjustment. And so the joint itself has the highest number of mechanoreceptors in the entire body. And mechanoreceptors tell the body where it is in space. Okay. So oh, wow. the brain has to have a constant feed of activation mm -hmm. to stay alive. It needs oxygen. Mm -hmm nutrition and activation. Mm -hmm. 
This is interesting. Uh, if you take an astronaut and you send them up into space for a long mission, when they come back down, they're taken out on a wheelchair. Right. Because they can't move, because they haven't had enough brain activation for the time that is they've that spent why? up there. It's the brain activation that's yes. the problem. It's they've lost the, the brain activation from gravity. It's not the muscles just got so weak really quick, it's just they mm -hmm. just stopped functioning together. Yes. And so basically, um, when you have to increase the activation going to the brain in a person who's very injured and in a lot of pain, it does take a higher frequency. But as soon as they're stable, we can slow down the visits and then we get into more of a wellness routine. Um, I always say, you know, for general wellness care, if you play hard every couple weeks, if you are kind of mellow and don't do a lot of sports and don't really get yourself too mangled, <laughs> mm -hmm. then right. you know, maybe, maybe once a month at the least. If you go less than once a month, then what happens is things kind of start to catch up on you. But if you're bull riding for fun. If you're bull riding for fun. Or even at Papa's and Beer right. in Rosarito. Everyone's different. So, you know, it depends <laughs> on how hard you play. It depends on old injuries that you mm. could have, mm -hmm. creating old areas with scar tissue. Are you telling me everybody's different? Yes, imagine that. You treat it, you, you, you personalize care. Everyone is the same, but different. You okay, know? well, I have a question. Oh, mention, ask her and mention who, who gets hair affected the ages. I well, I want, that's okay. a great, that's a great question. This is clearly not a child's spine. No. But I just saw something in your magic basket for kids in this family friendly place. Oh, oh yes. Is, I can get in trouble for holding a child by its head. <laughs> this is probably bad. Yes, we were taught child. in school, even hold the doll the same way you would hold a real baby. How, you're right. Well, how, it's good practice, right? You should right. just never hold anything like you that. You should just, <laughs> just, just to, in case you get a slip. Um, so there's been a number of times, so I was, skeptical about the sound of my body cracking mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's just me being you know musically minded and sound is is sensitive but what sold me on you and your service here is when we brought in our baby who was sick and also just jacked up from birth because you can imagine what mm -hmm. that does um and with a couple adjustments with a child mm -hmm. you were able to like stop runny nose or ear infection yeah. too and um, also just the alignment from both my wife after having our last baby yeah. and the child itself so what what do you do what's the thought around chiro <laughs> chiropractic for kids oh my gosh okay gotta show that <laughs> <clears throat> I didn't um, go to school I got my chiropractic certificate <laughs> online at the University of Phoenix fair enough okay um, chiropractic for kids <laughs> is simply because Kids have a spine too. So Kids have a spine too. It's a yes. bumper sticker and a t-shirt. Uh, I always uh, try to tell people about the birth process itself. So when a baby's born, let's say we have a... a this is a family-friendly show. Family-friendly show. Let's say the baby comes out through the normal... Oh, let's get scratch that. The normal exit, not the sunroof. No, you can say vagina here. I can say vagina. Okay. Let's say we have a vaginal birth. Um... What happens is the baby is compressed axially. Is torqued, this the vagina? Yes, this okay. is the vagina end. Torqued and then squeezed as they come out. So all those things are happening to their body as they Aww. come into the world. I understand birth is hard. We all had to do it. It's okay, you're here. Um, but when they come out, uh, what happens sometimes is they have a neck sprain. It's, sometimes it's obvious. You'll see babies with torticollis. You'll see the head turned and tilted. That's a spasm of the sternocleidomastoid muscle, and it's happening because the top of the neck and frequently the bottom of the neck are out of alignment. Some big words. Yes. Sorry. Anyways. No, I, I trust you with those words. Yes. So baby adjustments are very, very gentle. I just use my fingertips. It doesn't take much. Those joints go right back in. And, you know, as you remember when your daughter was adjusted, <coughs> you know, is this too low? Um, we just kind of... Laid her down, and I worked my fingers up her spine. So just, just like this. Just kind of... <clears throat> I would find the areas of misalignment, and I would gently push them back in. Or just using her body weight against my hands. And then when we would come around to her neck, sometimes we would do a little bit of rotation at the very top of the neck to get that upper bone, which is shaped like a ring. This one right here mm. at the top is shaped like a ring. It's shaped mm. different than all the other ones. And so just that one. Sometimes we have to put a little bit of rotation back in that. 
And it's really relaxing for babies. We see a lot of improvement um, of all sorts of things that babies struggle with. Everything from uh, colic to um, pooping issues, not pooping enough, or um, lots of crying because of discomfort that they can't really voice any other way. Um, yeah, just all sorts of things. And with kids with ear infections and stuff like that, you know, the upper bone of the neck is right here next to the ears. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is when that bone is out of alignment, it can create enough swelling that that teeny tiny eustachian tube, which is the tube that goes from the, the middle uh, ear down into the throat mm -hmm. to drain the canal, um, it can have enough pressure on it that it can't drain. So what happens is the fluid that just sits there, what happens to fluid that doesn't move? It, it turns, turns into, into a, a boggy a marsh. Swamp. Yeah, it yes, was, it I was going to say that, but I didn't think that was the right answer. <laughs> no, it is the right answer. It's very, I was thinking about the very logical down the street. Yeah. So what happens is that the so that little bit of, yeah, it gets you get swampier, oh. it gets infected, and then um, and then what happens is if you adjust that area of the neck, it allows that swelling to go down, that tissue to drain, and the ear infection will drain itself. Amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. And it's really simple. And uh, chiropractors have a lot of success in helping kids overcome ear infections without necessarily having to turn to antibiotics. Well, my, my child right now is two and a half and she yells at us a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she'll headbutt us and, and try to push us off the furniture. Is there anything you can help us with that? <laughs> well, if she's headbutting, maybe you should bring her in to get checked. <laughs> <laughs> Put a helmet on it for a while just in case. Okay. Yes, I don't know if chiropractic uh, corrects the terrible twos, but uh, <laughs> it does. Uh, it does help with contentment. Okay. Well, generally... thanks for keeping it real because yeah. you know it could be a fix all, but it does have limits. So, so that's good. I won't bring her by. Do you, maybe I'll if we just show up and leave her. <laughs> maybe you could do something off. with her. <laughs> I know you have. I'll you just have, give her some toys to play You with. have kids too. I know. Okay, I want to. I want to have a couple more questions. I wanted to address this. Is this from a real human? No. Okay. Did they give it to you in your graduated chiropractic school? No. You had to buy your own you spine. Have to buy your own spine. I know. What a jip, right? Yeah. At my online chiropractic course that I'm offering for ninety nine dollars, <laughs> you, you get a free spine when you graduate. The, um, the free spine might cost you more than the course. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's plenty we can talk about here, but I don't think I will. I think I'll let the um, adjusting adjust for itself. But I always take the opportunity when I see a spine just to look at it a little more closely. What, give, a, it, give us one quick idea about the spine that people should think about when they look at this thing. It looks like um, I saw this cow remnant on the side of the road, and that's as close as I got to this, and I took it home when I was in college. But that's about it. I haven't ever really looked at this with the idea of this is a human, not, not really, but it, it, it mimics the human spine. This is what's going on yes. and holding us up and the carrying case for all of our nerves and yes. body So functions. really, the, the, everything you're saying right now is the reason why I keep it in the office. It's such a phenomenal marvel of yes. human architecture to see this thing that you have been, this, this thing that, has, that is holding you together you know, that it our is. creator has made to protect us. And uh, it's just something that little kids can come check out up close also because, you know, it's down at their level inside my office and they can kind of get an idea of what's inside that they can't see. And it's really just an incredible spring-loaded instrument. It is. Protecting, cushioning, help, helping you move and... Um, you know, sometimes it's one of those things that's it's like stranger than fiction. It's yeah, really, I don't think Steve Jobs could have come up with this. I don't, I don't know. I don't think he could. No. Well, let me ask you one more question in parting here, and it has to do with your practice here in OB. Mm -hmm. Why OB? Mm. Why do you do what you do here? Those are two very important components to your practice. I moved to San Diego in 2003 after I uh, graduated from my undergrad in Los Angeles. Excuse me. And um, I never left. I came to OB and I never left. I uh, felt like I found my tribe, my happy place, and uh, we love it here. And we lived just up the street for years and years. And so it just made logical sense that we would have a, 
a little community-based office that was walking distance that was um, in the heart of town that would become a meeting place for people to even just get to know each other. And mm -hmm. it happens all the time. People will be in the waiting room here and they'll see each other out in the streets and out on the beach in Ocean mm. Beach and they'll be like, hey, we totally. know each other. <laughs> and, and whenever we come too, we always recognize people and yeah. meet new people too. Yeah. No, that's that's nice. It's having a local hub that's wellness-based that you can yeah. go to. And, and you've been so good with our family in terms of being available when one of us is hurting or a baby yeah. is, is hurting and whatnot and you guys have gone out of your way. Um, I want to end with this. This is our gift to you. And as you talked about the light in us and the energy, mm -hmm. this is a conductor that just shows that we are an electrical system. And when we touch the metal here, it shows that the electricity goes through us. Now, we want to share this with you in this context. Grab the hand and we can show. This is so cool. What happens when we come together. And the point is, this is for you to demonstrate the connectivity of you and you. I love of, it. Of you and your people. This is a great present. And the community at large. So thank take you. this with you. Courtney, Olive Branch Chiropractic, thank you so much for your time. You bet. Thanks you for rock. coming down.